cross, a crucifix, something. Just tell me, I'll get it for you. That's what you need for prayer. You need a focal point. Something to think about, something to focus you in. If you're looking for the cool, lifeteam.com has wallpapers you can put on your phone or on your laptop that will also do the trick. You need other things such as, I'm oh, sorry, secondly, you, when you're distracted, you have to go beyond ignoring the distractions. Pray for them, or you did that one. Uh, and the final thing I'm going to say is that you're learning, you should use different things to draw you into prayer. There are lots of cool tools. The thing that's hard to explain, I go to an ecumenical university, which means that I have uh, nine different Christians, nine different denominations of Christians in my, in my class tomorrow morning. Nine different denominations of Christians. And I keep bragging about the Catholic Church, because I think Catholic Church by far is the best church, not just because it is the only church that can create back Jesus Christ himself, but because we have the ultimate options for prayer. I point to my blessed mother and your blessed mother, Mary. Mary and devotion <coughs> the rosaries can work as a devotional tool. Um, can I say sacred scripture? There are all kinds of cool scripture prayers that you can do, and we can teach you. And if you don't already know them, can I say the catechism? My favorite, one of my favorite devotionals from Lent is to read the in brief of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Everyone asks, how can I play Stump the Chump with a group full of teenagers? First of all, teenagers are original. So are you guys all ask the same hundred questions. Once I knew the answer to those hundred questions, I read this. And I learned more and more and more about the church. And it became my, my ability, it became a great gift for me. So that when I run into life, when I'm talking to people, my parents, my families, I have the opportunity to engage in them. Memorize scripture. You know, today when I'm going to kick that photocopier, this line of scripture comes to mind. Here it is, you ready? St. Paul says, Three times I asked the thorn to be removed from my side, but the Lord said to me, My grace is sufficient in you. My, my, my glory is made perfect in weakness. So I boast openly in my weakness. When I am at my weakest, I am at my best. Remember I school lines of scripture like that, or lines that holy people say. One of the ones that I quote often is, it is a duty and honor of every man to honor every woman. John Paul II, 1978, said that. Lastly, if you're ever stuck for what to say and you don't know what the magic formula for prayer is, don't worry about it. Just talk to God. Whatever you say is going to be enough. And if you're looking for something to focus you, then go with a prayer you know. Most of you, if you're like me, most of you are kind of like me in some ways, you know the basic Catholic prayers. The Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Glory be. Use that to draw you into a prayer. A prayer. But don't, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. No. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou, most holy, blessed is the fruit of thy Lord Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in our death. Besides just finishing the prayer, did you see the difference? Sometimes we can just ramble through prayers and not think of what they need. And I do that all the time. I pray, I pray like for half an hour to an hour before I start my day. And sometimes my weakness is my strength. And my strength is that I get a lot done. And I make checklists and I get a lot done. My weakness is that I just not going to ramble through those checklists. Sometimes I'm like, it's not about how many things you can tell it's about how well you do those things on the cross. Pray for others, <coughs> intercede for others when they need prayer. Yeah, I hope several of you are praying that I don't go too much longer for this talk. I get that prayer a lot from teenagers when I talk to them. Please wrap it up. Intercede, seriously, intercede for other people. One of the great models of prayer is the Our Father, which uh, comes, it's in a couple of the Gospels, but I have the translation from Matthew's Gospel. Are you ready? <laughs> Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. <coughs> Think about that model of prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, Lord, I desire an intimate relationship with you. Hallowed be thy name. Lord, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. Lord, I want your will done in my life. Not what I want to do, but your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, Lord, allow your kingdom to come to this world to all people. Give us
Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, we trust that you sustain us this day and give us what we need. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others. Lord, I, I ask you for forgiving me for my failings and the times I've ignored you. And Lord, I ask that, that, that you give me the grace to forgive others who have hurt me. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, lead us out, out of evil. So I have a million things I want to say about prayer. I want to say, I want to just touch on them rapid fire. It is going to be hard to pray. Pray. Jesus knows this. Jesus was man. And he was walking on the cross and forgave those who, who persecuted him. So keep that in mind. Everyone struggles with prayer. One of the keys of prayer is humility. When Jesus teaches us how to pray, he uses the example of the people in the temple. And there was the, the, the Pharisee who was talking about how holy he was. And then there was the lowly tax collector who said, Lord, I am not even worthy to be seeing you. When you're praying, seek to be humble in your prayers. No matter how holy you are, you can always be holier. In fact, that's not one of my great theological things. That's something Mother Teresa talks about. Prayer is designed to be intimate. As intimate as the relationship between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the Trinity. <coughs> Trust that God will provide and all that we need. When you need something, ask it in Jesus' name. One of the most ancient prayers of the church is trusting that God will provide for us, that Jesus saves. And in fact, that is one of the oldest prayers of the church. Because it says in Scripture, whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give it. So when you're looking for, how do I pray? What do I say? I say a simple thing as, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, grant. Jesus, not your my will be done, but yours. And trust that Jesus say that was there for you, Matthew, by the way. Is it the power of the name? Alright. Trust in God. I'm over time, so I'm just going to skip to the last one. It's my favorite picture from Edge this year. The last thing that we need to do is think our prayer and put it into action. And we'll talk a lot more about this the second semester here, life team. But the real trick to this is putting is, is making your prayer last for the day. And it's about proclaiming God's kingdom. So think about Advent. Advent is about coming of Christ, threefold coming, which Jeanette talked very well about a few weeks ago. But how are you as individuals, through your prayer, making God known in the world? You start by seeking a relationship with God. And once you have one, especially with His Son, Jesus, how do you ask the Holy Spirit to work through you to make Him known in the world to the people who don't believe this? That's the real challenge. Christmas, I have a Sure, it's going to be an you and a few friends of mine. Jesus is coming quick. Everyone look busy. What are you doing? By first starting to pray for people, and then listening to what God is calling you to do. If prayer is a relationship, there's talking and there's listening. How are you listening to what God is calling you to do? So that's it. To end, I want to end with what I started with. The most important part of prayer for you to keep in mind is the fact that prayer should be as important as your next breath. It'll take, and until you desire that, um, strive for it. Because I'll tell you, there are days when it is that important to me and days when it's not. And those are the days, the days that it's not are the days when I know I need it more than ever. Guys, I want to thank you for listening to my ramblings. I'm sorry I didn't <coughs> want to